If you have code you need to move from one environment to another, like a Canvas app, model-driven app, or a Flow, there's a lot that can go wrong where your updates aren't showing or you accidentally deleted something you didn't mean to. Today, we're gonna go over the nitty gritty of how it works so your deployments are super smooth. I've seen this fool some of the best developers, but it's not gonna happen to you. My name's Sean, and I'm excited to show you. Here is my Power Apps environment. And if I click up here into the right, I see all the environments that I'm part of. And typically you should have three environments, dev, test, and prod. Now let's do some work in our dev environment and then move it into the production environment. Let's say I have an outdoor adventures company and I wanna store all the contracts of our customers. And let's say I would need a new table to store all the activities we offer and a canvas or model driven app so my users can interact with it. It's really tempting to make all this by coming here, clicking tables and flows and well, you should never make really anything using this menu. I'll explain why later. What you wanna do is come in here into solutions to do all your work. A solution is like a container to cleanly hold all of your code, and it's a nice organized place to work in. So if I navigate to the top left and click New Solution, it's gonna ask me for a name called Outdoor Contracts. Next is the publisher. The publisher is like the author of the solution. To keep things simple, if you're a small company, you should just put the name of your company. Let's do Trek or Treat. And the prefix is key because it's gonna appear in a lot of places. So I'm gonna put the initials here, click Save, and then I can choose them here and then hit Create. I'm gonna quickly add a new table for storing these outdoor activity contracts. And if you open up Advanced Options, my schema name has that nice prefix so I know exactly who made this table. Click Save. Now don't worry if I'm going too fast. I'm gonna explain the nitty gritty at the end. We wanna get to the deployments part. So one more piece is maybe I come here and make a Canvas app, something like this. And I've also come here into new and created a flow so I can get notifications when new contracts are created. Okay, I have my flow, my table, and my app all nice in this solution. Now let's actually move this solution to this other environment, Prod. Now the steps are simple. You select your solution, you come up here and then scroll down to export solution. We click next. Now, managed versus unmanaged. An unmanaged solution is editable. So when you make a new solution, it's always an unmanaged solution. However, when you export it, it should always be a managed solution because managed solutions are really hard to edit. That's on purpose. You don't want people messing with your solution in production because that's the finished product. If I click export, you're going to have this download button where it's going to give you a zip file. If you go to your other environment, click here into import solution, click browse, select the recently downloaded zip, click next. You'll get some message that it worked. I see that there's my solution. So what just happened? We've already established our outdoor contract solution is unmanaged in dev because I can come into here and edit whatever I want. But what happens if I delete this solution? Will it delete the flow and the table we created? The answer is no. When you delete an unmanaged solution, it keeps all of the stuff that were in the unmanaged solution because the unmanaged solution isn't really a container for it. It's more like something that's pointing at the other items inside of it. However, a managed solution is a nicely packaged up piece of code. So in the prod environment, if I delete the contract outdoor solution, it's also gonna delete everything inside of it. And this is a good thing, because in production, they want to keep things tidy, so what goes together, stays together, gets deleted together. That's why if I open my outdoor contract solution in production, I get this big warning message that says this is managed, I can't edit it. Here's a really easy mistake to make when you don't fully understand manage versus unmanage. Watch this. If we look here, our outdoor contracts had this simple flow. I can click on it, and if I come up here into the three dots and I go down here and hit remove this solution, not delete, I'm just gonna remove it from this solution. Maybe I'm going to use it somewhere else in a different solution. The point is it doesn't live in the solution anymore. If I go up here and to manage my flows, I still see that the flow exists. 
everything's fine. And right now in the prod environment, the flow also exists. Everything's great. But watch what happens when I export the solution. When the import process finishes and try to open it, you will see that there is no flow here. And then if I refresh the power automate window, the flow is gone entirely. This boggles people's mind and can cause so many issues in production. Because look, I just removed it from the solution. It totally exists right here. But because I deployed a managed solution, it deleted it. Because a managed solution is like a container. Now, if you deploy a solution and accidentally delete a Canvas app or a flow, that's pretty bad. But imagine if you did this with a table or a column in a table. It won't just delete the table and the column, but also the data inside of it. That's why you got to be careful with this stuff. Well, let's assume your deployment went smooth. Then suddenly your users freak out because there's some emergency fix they need to happen. Like, oh no, besides sending an email to a manager, we need to notify the supervisor. And on the Canvas app, Blue signifies the color of death, so you need to change that to green right away. It's really tempting in these emergency hotfix scenarios to start making the changes in production. They think, I'm just going to quickly change it in production, solve the problem. Once it's solved in production, I'm just going to go redeploy it from dev and it will all be fine. So if I come in here, if I make this change to green in production, and then I add this action to Power Automate, meanwhile, in the dev environment, I did something different just to highlight a point. I created a compose that says this will not appear in prod. And then on the Canvas app, I decided to make it red. When I deploy this, you would think that this Power Automate and Canvas app change would override what I did in production. But watch what happens. So in production, clearly the changes we made in dev did not actually override what was in production like we expected. After import, if we look at our Power Automate flow, this is what was in dev that I imported. So this is what I expect to see. And look, it was modified five minutes ago. Let's open it. Our Power Automate flow stayed the same. Luckily, we get a pretty loud message here that says removed unmanaged layer. When you modify a Canvas app or a flow in production, you create an unmanaged layer, which basically tells that environment, hey, this code is super important. Don't let anything override it. So as you continue to deploying your solutions, they're all getting overridden because that unmanaged layer is king and stays on top. So to solve this, if we come up here and click remove unmanaged layer, it's gonna take us to the solution. You will see something that looks like this. And right here, you'll see the first layer, which is what we deployed. And then here's that annoying, unmanaged layer. You can also get here by just hopping into the solution in production, the managed one, clicking the three dots and clicking this button that says see solution layer and then hit remove active customizations at the top here. If I scroll over to my Power Automate flow and let's refresh it, my prod environment is back in sync with my dev environment and I can keep doing deployments properly. I've got a few more scenarios to show you, but if you're more interested in Dataverse, model-driven apps, Dynamics 365, I've got a specific in-depth training that goes into how to work with high record counts, high amount of users, and build solutions at the enterprise level in a few hours hours instead of spending days going in the wrong direction. The link is in the description. It's completely free. A great thing about solutions is they can share apps, flows, and tables all between themselves. So I have a solution here called Adventure Activities. And if I open that one up, I can scroll up here to add existing and then go in and add the messenger flow I made earlier. Let's say I change this flow from send email to manager, but send email to lifeguard. Whether I deploy the contracts outdoor solution or the adventure activities solution in production, the flow is now going to send an email to the lifeguard. Let's say I deploy my adventure activities solution to production, and then I decide to delete the outdoor contract solution. Is it going to let me? No, I'm going to get a nasty error that the adventure activity solution depends on the outdoor contract solution because it does. The flow that Adventure Activities is using is using the table inside of Outdoor Contracts. This is a pretty smart thing where the environment is protecting you from deleting things where other solutions depend on. Let's back it up. Pretend I never deployed Adventure Activities. Let's pretend I also made a new event solution. I added our notifier flow to it 
but I modified the flow to send an email to the events coordinator. Let's back it up. I have an exported adventure activity solution that sends an email to lifeguard. The events solution updated the same flow to send an email to the events coordinator. I'm gonna export that. And then the outdoor contract solution updates the flow to what it should be, which is to email the manager. And I'm gonna export that. And I'm gonna import the solutions in this order. Outdoor contracts, then events, then adventure activities. So my question is, who is the flow emailing to? As you probably guessed, adventure activities is the winner because it's the last one. And you can see which solutions are using the flow by clicking into one of them and clicking the three dots and selecting under advanced the C solution layers. And there's my order nicely spelled out. Thanks for watching. Be sure to check out that training.